This short tutorial is going to walk us through the circulation module within Koha. We'll talk about creating patrons, checking out patrons, checking in patrons, and some of the reports that go along with that circulation module. In this top area here, you can see that I have the ability to easily go ahead, check out to a patron using a card number or partial name, check in a barcode, renew a barcode, search my database for a patron, and then also search the catalog. From the patron module, I can go ahead and um, search, search for a patron or also create a new patron, which is what we're going to start with. When we're creating a new patron in Koha, we can determine what patron category we're creating them in. Patron categories can determine how long their library card is good for, what patron messaging settings they're going to be defaulted to, what patron data is being stored, as well as if there is any fees or fines associated with that library card. When I create that, when I select that patron category, I'm provided with a patron form that has some required fields, some collapse fields, and some other fields that I can or not necessarily need to fill out. As I start this process here, I'm going to create that required first name and last name, an address for this um, patron. Koha also allows you to determine city, state, and zip code and easily have those drop down options that are going to fill in those fields for the staff member. We have some contact information that we can fill out, identify their pr primary main contact me method. Those collab fields, I can click and expand if I need to, but this definitely helps the process where the form gets a little bit shorter if I don't need those fields all the time. The next section, library card management, I'm gonna give my library patron a card number that's going to be assigned to the library I'm logged into as I create this card, that category I chose in the beginning, and some various additional text fields that I can fill out Library setup is going to have that registration date. The expiration date will populate from the category that they have been created with. I can include an OPAC note, which is gonna display in the public catalog, as well as a staff circulation note. Assign them a login to the public catalog, so a username and password. If I wanted to use that same card number, I could certainly do that or assign a different username give them a password and then I also have some additional fields um, that I can fill out if necessary so here we've just given some examples of a patron attribute which allows staff to identify and collect other pieces of data such as maybe if they've completed their 3d printing course if there's something to um, with their census as well as a hold shelf pickup alias that can be printed on the hold shelf and then finally, the patron messaging preferences. This allows patrons to um, determine what notices they are going to set, be sent and in what format. Koha will send notifications via SMS and through email. If your library is using some sort of third party vendor, such as Itiva or Shoutbomb, you can absolutely will have a phone. Um, option which would allow you to pick the phone to send messages or alternatively let Koha know how you would like those notifications sent to the patron. If you are using SMS, you would include an SMS number and that SMS provider. Once you've created that patron, we are then brought to the library patron page, which gives all the information that is possible that we just filled out. If I wanted to include a photo, I can easily do that using a photo from um, my computer webcam or choose a, choose a file from my computer. 
I have the ability to edit any area. So any block of information, I can go in and edit that. And it's going to bring me directly to that specific area of the form. I have a nice little summary over here on the left with the pertinent information that would be helpful to staff. And then from here, I can go directly to their checkouts and see any checkouts and start checking directly out to the patron. I'm going to pop over to a patron that has some checkouts so we can look at those. So here is a, another sample patron within the database. I have my checkout page area clicked that I can start scanning. Any information here on the right, which allows staff to see anything if they have overdues, if they have holds awaiting for those, for that patron, or any notes or messages included to this patron. A couple of other options that you have at the top here, you can directly go to edit, change their password, you cannot see the password that it was, but you can certainly give that patron a new password. You can duplicate. So if you were doing a husband and wife or um, spouse or parent and child, guardian and child, duplicating will see, save some of the pertinent information from one form to another, which is definitely streamlining the process for your circulation staff. You can go ahead and search within the database to place a hold add a message, and then also you have some other options under more, such as renew patron, send a welcome email, send a password reset. Let's go to checkout and let's go ahead and check something out to this patron. Once I've added the barcode, I'll be able to see the title and when it's due right at the top here. If I scroll down a little bit, I'll be able to see the full view of that um, title I just checked out. The title is clickable. I can see the item type, where it lives in the library, they have any renewals, or if it is, has the ability to be automatically renewed. I also can check in directly from this form, as well as return claim return items from this patron's account. As I scroll down, I can see some other checkouts that have been made out to this patron. All those that are in red are overdue. I can see that it is overdue. And if I scroll way over to the right, I can see it, it is on hold for somebody. So I would not be able to renew that. I can also see if an item is not renewable or if it's scheduled for new renewal. So I have lots of um, options here at the checkout page. When I'm renewing or um, renewing items that are renewable, I can assign a due date. I can do multiple renewals or multiple check-ins and hit that renew or check-in selected items. I can also override renewal restrictions with the correct permissions for a staff member and give those patrons a few extra days. I can see any holds that this patron has, the hold date, the title, if it is waiting for them at the library, if it is suspended, if it is in transit, I have the ability to suspend, cancel a hold, and change the pickup location for that patron. If there is something that is not able to be found and I needed to cancel that hold, I could cancel the holds I'm marking and then send a notification to that patron and let them know the reason why. From the accounting tab, I can see any outstanding payments that they need to make as well as through the transaction tab, I can see all historical transactions that this patron has made payments, if they've been charged lost, if they've had any fines or fees and things that have happened to this patron's account. I also can create a manual invoice for this patron. So if I wanted to charge them for copies or for a new card or something just out, you know, out of the ab abnormal, I can go ahead and, and attach a manual invoice, invoice to this patron. The last area that I love on the patron form is the notices on the left hand side. This would allow the staff member to see every notice that has been sent to this patron, how it was sent, so an email or SMS, the status of that notification, and when it was sent. 
The message queue runs every 15 minutes, so the time it created an update on would be the time it was created and when it was actually sent. And then when I click any of these, I'll be able to see the entire message that was sent to the patron, as well as resend it if necessary. A few other things that you have over here on the left, if if it's allowed, the circulation and hold history is visible from the staff interface, as well as with their correct permission to see any modifications that have made to this patron's account. Going ahead and searching for something to hold for this patron, I can click this search to hold. I'm in my advanced search within Koha and have the ability to search by keyword, author, title, by item type at the top, shelving location or collection, or various other fields. When I've made that search, the results are going to be provided to the staff member, but also the patron's name that you started on is also going to appear within the brief record. So it's going to be able to make it super easy to go ahead and place a hold for that patron. That patron's name is now attached. I can add any notes, pick the pickup branch if it's different from their home branch, if there is a hold start or expire on date, as well as if I need to place more than one hold. It's going to default to hold next available item, but if for some reason I needed to pick a specific item, whether it's by volume or serial enumeration or a specific disc, I can go ahead and pick that specific item if necessary. Once I place a hold on that um, title, I can see the, any existing hold. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in one more um, patron's name so we can find that. Go through that same process so we can see what multiple holds look like on this account. So you can see the first person that made a hold will be at the top, the second person will be um, second and so on and so forth. I can change the priority with these numbers or with these arrows. I can still assign an expiration date, change the pickup location, as well as make any suspensions to those holds. Clicking back to that patron that we started on, going to that checkout, let's go ahead and check one more item out to the patron. I'm gonna use these little filters. I can specify a specific due date. So if I wanted to bypass cir the Koha's circulation rule, I can go ahead and do that and just give them a few days, hit that checkout. And now that new due date will be assigned as September 20th. At this point, I can easily click enter and print the screen, print the, their checkouts. I could print this, use this print icon, do a full printout of all their checkouts and any additional um, information that shows up on the slips customized by the library. And that's going to clear the screen. Any, the last patron that you were accessing is gonna be up here at the top right hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that last patron. And then I just wanna show the other prints that you do have available. You can directly go ahead and print a slip, print an overdues, print a check-in slip, and print an entire summary for that patron. I'm gonna go back to the home um, page and I'm gonna go ahead and check in some a few items just so we can see that process. Go ahead and scan or type in the barcode number. If any holds are associated with any with that check-in, they would populate on the screen and I would be able to go ahead and confirm that hold, print that slip and confirm or ignore the hold. Any check-ins that are, are occurring, I'll be able to see the due date, the title, the holding information, the patron it, that checked it in, any current checkouts they have, and then I can easily print a check-in slip here. Go ahead and do one more check-in. Again, you can see the due date, any, any information about this patron, and easy access to any information, such if I wanted to head over to that bibliographic record or go directly to that patron. 
Now within the circulation module, so I'm just gonna go home, I can hit this circulation or the circulation option in the center. I do have the same functionality I had in the top green bar, so check out, check in, renew. I also can run some reports, so any items that are in my holds queue, so items that I need to pull off my shelf, if I click that holds queue, I can um, opt to filter out specific areas such as looking at a specific shelving location, collection, or item type, or run the entire holds queue. From here, I can organize any of these columns to have it in a different order. I can also directly go ahead and send this to an Excel or directly print this. And then at this point, I could go grab this title, check it in, and then it would it would either stay at my library as I'm a multi-branch library or be sent to another library. I also have the ability to search any of these columns for a specific call number or barcode or patron if I'm looking for something specific in the holds queue. Popping back over to the circulation module, I have a holds awaiting pickup report, which would show me all holds that are waiting for patrons that are sitting on my hold shelf. All, a tab for all holds that are waiting over that desired amount by the library. In this case, it's 10 days. I can go ahead and cancel all of those if I wanted to, as well as any holds, any patrons with holds that have been canceled that are waiting on the shelf. So that would show any patrons that had waiting holds that went ahead and canceled those. I have a whole ratio, ratio report, which I can determine the ratio that I would like to look at this report and then see any titles that have that many holds and if I should order any. Finally, over on the circulation menu again, I have the ability to see any transfers that I'm supposed to receive or send out. I could do an easy transfer of just that barcode, sending it to a specific area. And then I can go ahead and run any overdue reports if I, ne if I needed to see what was overdue in the system. I have these filter on options. I want to look at everything that's overdue in my library. I can do that. I can see the due date, the patron, when it was due, I can download this, and of course I can organize these by specific columns. This concludes the circulation module. Thank you.